let's put a barrier okay and let's do, just reset everything and let's do a plain wave all right oops and let me lower that barrier i mean let me lower the energy so your energy is less than the barrier and what you can see there Look at the amplitude of your wave to the left of the barrier compared to the amplitude to the right of the barrier. Okay, so you're saying that there's a small fraction of the particles that are able to traverse that barrier. What happens if we approach the barrier much more closely? So I raise the energy a little bit. What happens to the amplitude on the right side? There's an increased amplitude on the right side. There's a greater chance for tunneling the closer your energy is to the barrier. Okay? You can actually display the reflection and transmission probability right here. You're looking at a 9% transmission probability. 91% is the reflection probability. So the probability that your particle can traverse the barrier is 9% in this particular instance. And the probability that it's going to be reflected back is 91%. Now, what happens uh, if you can actually see also on this animation uh, the incoming and the reflected wave? So you click here on the separate uh, button right here. Okay, what you have here is is what we called F e to the i k one x. Right. The thing that's moving back, you'll see there's a, there's a wave that's moving back. That was what we would call V e to the negative i k1 x. The, this wave that's moving forward is a e to the i k1 x. And what do you notice about the wave that's moving back? It's a it should be, it's not very obvious here, it's only 91%, so it's a little, should be a little smaller amplitude compared to the wave that's moving forward. Let's move this a little higher. Okay. So it's this ratio right here of E squared to A squared, the ratio of the, amp the square of the ratio of the amplitudes that would give you that trans transmission probability of 0.13, okay? So I can see that that, would, that should be about 0.13, about 13% of the amplitude if you square it, okay? All right, so what would happen if we were to widen our barrier? Make our barrier wider? The amplitude goes down. The amplitude right of the barrier is going to go down. There's less tendency for transmission to the barrier. If I make it smaller, greater transmission probability. All right. I raise the bar barrier height. What happens? Transmission probability goes down. All right. So that's how you can visualize the solution. There's another simulation that you can look at at Kansas State uh, and that's a link right there if you're interested in. Here's how your book summarizes the, the results. Left of the barrier you have a high amplitude, right of the barrier you have a low amplitude. Okay, so the ratio, uh, that gives you an indication of the transmission probability. So here's your, is the amplitude of the, uh, this is this part right here. It's a representation of A, E to the I, K, 1, X. Okay, and this one would be E to the E to the minus I, K, uh, I, K, 1, X. Right? And this thing right here, the reflected wave, that's what we call B, E to the minus I, K, 1, X. Notice that within the barrier, you don't have any oscillations. Okay, because, look at your functions inside the barrier. What's side 2? C e to the k two x plus d e to the minus k two x, right? There's no i there, so that's not going to be a sum of sine and cosine. This is an exponential growth, okay? 
as x gets bigger, this is going to go to infinity as x approaches infinity. But your x is not going to go to infinity. It's just from 0 to L. And then this is an exponential decay. The larger the x, the smaller this number is. So that's what happens to your function in the, inside the barrier. Now, why is this thing called tunneling? Well, classical mechanics says total energy is kinetic plus potential, right? Well, what happens inside the barrier? This is your total energy, but your potential energy is higher. It would seem, it would appear here that you have a negative kinetic energy, right? Kinetic energy, uh, let's see. Kinetic energy is going to be what? E minus V, right? And E is less than potential, so that's going to be a negative kinetic energy. Classical mechanics says that's not allowed. You can't have a negative kinetic energy. What's the definition of kinetic energy? One half mv squared. So in cases where you have the total energy is less than the potential energy, you have what is called a classically forbidden situation. Classical mechanics does not allow that. But yet, quantum mechanics says there's a finite probability of finding the particle in a classically, in a classically forbidden region. So that's why it's called tunneling. We say it's tunneling through a, it's tunneling through a barrier. Right? And one thing you'll find is that the probability of tunneling is greater the lighter the particle. So these are two plots, one for a heavier particle right here, this, uh, this one right here, and then this one right here for a lighter particle. Okay. So you'll notice the amplitude, the magnitude of your wave function is much larger for the lighter particle as opposed to the heavier particle. So we say lighter particles are better able to tunnel through barriers, through potential barriers. 